Hey guys, today I have a new Photoshop tutorial and I'm going to be showing you how to brighten up dark photos and kind of bring life and detail back into them. So this is the photo that we're going to be editing today and I'm just going to jump right into it. So let's start by duplicating our background layer and I like to do this by pressing Command J or you can just drag the background layer down here to that paper symbol and it'll duplicate it for you. So that's just like the exact same layer on top of your original image. So you don't do anything to change or destroy the original image that you have. So the first thing I like to do in Photoshop is normally to open up my curves. And I do this because I like to have a nice base for my image to work on. So I like to adjust the tone and make the image nice and balanced before we start doing major color adjustments. So I'm going to go in and create a nice simple S curve. So I normally like to do this by dragging the blacks up to create like a kind of matte black look. And then I just kind of fill out the curve like so. And I also bring down the highlights to kind of mattify them a little bit. And once I have all the main points down of my curve, I like to just kind of tweak them around a little bit until I'm happy with what the image looks like. So I feel like her face is looking a little bit bright. So I'm going to bring this white point down a little bit so it's not as contrasty there. And then I'm also going to bring the shadows down a little bit so the background gets a bit darker. And let's just have a look at a before and after. I think that's looking pretty good. So I'm going to leave that as it is. And I always like to do the tone curve on one layer. And then I like to create another curves layer to start adjusting the colors of our photo. And the reason I do this is because sometimes adjusting the color of your image can sometimes affect the tone of your photo as well. So if you've got a tone curve on a separate layer, it's easy to, you can change the opacity of it or you can delete it and do it again. And for me personally, I just find it better to have them on separate layers. I guess that's just the way I like to, to work. So I always like to start off with blue when I'm editing curves. And I do the same thing that we did with our, tone, our tonal curve and create an S curve here. I like bringing the blue, like the white section of the curve up to add that nice kind of blue tone to our subject's skin tone. So here is our blue curve and I'm basically using this tone, this color curve to try and correct the colors of our image. It was looking a little bit like green and a little bit muddy and it has kind of no like punch or personality to it. So that's what I'm trying to edit here. Okay. And now let's move on to our greens where I want to pull the greens down to try and get rid of that tinge that's in our photo. So the green tinge, I don't know if you can see, but it's kind of here in this part of the image and kind of in her hair and over here as well. So we're going to go down to the shadows part of the curve and pull that down because, you know, we don't really have any greens here in the highlights of the image. So we want to pull them out of the shadows. So we'll do it by pulling it here. Now that's kind of affected our skin tone a little bit. So I'm also going to make a point up here in the whites and pull the greens up a little bit more just to get the image looking back to what it looked like before we pulled that down. And let's just bring that down a little bit again. Perfect. All right, so this is a before and after of the color curve. That's before and that's after. So now that we've got a nice base that we're working on, I like to go in with the color balance tool. And this is where I kind of add my personality and like my colors and you kind of give your photo a style in this section, in my opinion. So for the midtones, I like to bring up the yellows just to make the image nice and warm. And I also like to bring up the pinks and the reds a little bit as well. I just really, really love like the warm looks that it that it gives a photo. Next, we're gonna go into the highlights. And again, I'm gonna pull all the sliders into a warmer section of the color choices that you have. And for the highlights, I do this really, really subtly. So as you saw with the midtones, we kind of pulled everything like really far down, but with the highlights, we're gonna keep it a little less extreme. <laughs> so I think that's good with the highlights. And now let's move on to the shadows. 
So normally if I do like a warm highlight to an image, I like to try and keep the shadows opposite to that. So for the shadows, I'm actually going to be bringing down into the blues. And we'll play around with this slider and I like what it looks like in the pinks. And then with this one, we're just gonna keep that one at zero because I like what that looks like. Okay, so here's a before and after. And then if you wanna add like another touch to your image, I also like to play around with photo filters which have really kind of subtle effects to your photo but are also like makes a big difference. So I really like the warming filter. Um, if you could see when we just put it on, it kind of affected the highlights of the image. And you can also adjust the intensity of how much it, it applies to your photo by using the density slider. But I like it where it was around 20%. And there we pretty much have our final image. This is a really simple tutorial, but just using these things, the tone curve, the color curve, the color balance, and the photo filter makes such a big difference in editing an image. And I'll show you a before and after. So this is the before, which is the original photo straight out of the camera, and this is the after. I really hope you guys enjoyed this tutorial. If you have any questions, please let me know in the comments. And thank you so much for watching. I'll see you all next time. Bye.